Hello everyone. In this lecture video, I want to talk to you about enumerative induction. In particular, I will define enumerative induction. We'll examine some concepts necessary to understand, evaluate, and analyze enumerative induction. And then we'll conclude with induction fallacies. Now, an argument, an enumerative induction is an argument pattern in which we re reason from premises about individual members of a group to conclusions about the group as a whole. So let's say you have X percent of the observed members of group A have property P. Therefore, we conclude that X percent of all members of group A probably have property P. Some concepts that are necessary to understand are the following. In any enumerative induction argument, you are going to have the target group, which is the whole collection of individuals under study. And by individuals, we don't just mean people or agents, but it could be objects or cell phones or water sample or or, or numbers. Now, the second is sample. That's the observed members of the target group. Since it's impossible or not feasible to study every member, so we pick a sample to observe so that we can extrapolate uh, for the entire group. And then finally, we have the relevant property, a property of interest in the target group. Now, I've color-coded these three different concepts um, for, for an example that we're going to consider in just a little bit. So, thinking about the sample, what's important is that when you're drawing a sample, uh, you have to draw a random sample. If a sample is randomly selected, then every member of the target group has an equal chance or equal probability of being chosen or selected for the sample. Now, a representative sample is a sample resembling or reflecting the target group in all relevant ways. Now, a biased sample is a sample that does not represent the target group. So when you have a biased sample, it is not a representative sample. So let's, so, let's, so let's consider an example. So suppose you hear that most chihuahuas I know are sweet dogs. Therefore, most chihuahuas are sweet dogs. The first thing you have to do is to identify the conclusion and then identify the premise. And then you have to ask yourself, what exactly is the sample? What is the target group? What is the relevant property? So take a moment, pause the video to identify those things on your own and take a look at this cute dog. It's actually kind of mean, actually. <laughs> So now, well, we can see that the conclusion comes after therefore. So the conclusion of that argument is most chihuahuas are sweet dogs. And then the premise is what comes before the semicolon, which is most chihuahuas I know are sweet dogs. Now, the target group is chihuahuas, all the chihuahuas in the world. And there's got to be many, many of them, right? And then the sample by which I draw the conclusion is most chihuahuas that I know. Um, maybe you have met 10, 20, maybe 50 chihuahuas. And then the relevant property is in the, I guess that's purple or maroon, sweet dogs, right? And then notice that the target group always repeats in the premise, premises, and the conclusion as well. And what do you think? Is this a good argument? Is this a bad argument? And why would that be? The last topic of discussion is induction fallacies. Now, an inductive argument 
you know, the premises make the conclusion likely to be true. That's a good argument. But when you have a, a weak inductive argument, and then the example that we saw in the previous example with chihuahuas, that's a weak inductive argument. Now, when you have a weak inductive argument, then you are likely to have induction fallacies. Now, fallacies uh, are mistakes in reasoning. Now, there are two different types of inductive fallacies with respect to enumerative inductions. First is hasty generalization. The fallacy of drawing a conclusion about a target group based on an inadequate or small or not enough big sample size. So if I say, you know, the food in this town is lousy, that's the conclusion, and what's your evidence for that claim? Well, I ate one meal in this town. And you can see that the argument is lousy because just because you had one bad meal, you're not authorized to conclude that the food in this town is lousy. That's hasty generalization. The second type of induction fallacy is generaliz general generalizing from exceptional cases. I can't speak. A fallacy occurs when a speaker or writer attempts to support a general statement by citing an atypical supporting case. So the argument below commits that fallacy. So in your homework assignment, please identify the conclusion, the premise, and see why, in your opinion, that argument commits general, the fallacy of generalizing from exceptional cases.